as Craven Cottage, the home of Fulham, the club who are again back on their annual fight against relegation. It's going to be heavy going out there this afternoon and indeed heavy going for the rest of the season for Fulham. Every year it seems their main target is survival and today they've got a task that is as tough as it's unwelcome against doer, disciplined, uncompromising leads. The happy news for Fulham, and they can do with any luck that's going these days, is that Johnny Haynes, who could only play 45 minutes last week, has fully recovered from flu and is back in the side. Fulham need his craftsmanship and inspiration more than ever before. £100,000 deals are not for this club. They have to settle for a quarter of that sum. And here is their latest import, Joe Gilroy, a £25,000 buy from Clyde a couple of months back. Gilroy operates alongside Alan Clark and Les Barrett in the front three. He may not be as skillful as the other two, nevertheless he does get goals. He's got six at the moment, which makes him Fulham's second highest scorer behind Clark. The real issue for Fulham is when can they stop thinking about survival and start dreaming about success. Once upon a time, Leeds were even more struggling than Fulham. Today, they come to town as one of the most consistent and efficient teams in the league. A remarkable tribute to the work of Don Revy and his loyal staff. They're at full strength today with Mick Jones, their £100,000 buy from Sheffield United, leading the attack. Mick, as you can see, is powerfully equipped for his job, which requires courage as much as strength and skill. He's been handicapped by an ankle injury recently and has yet to show his £100,000 form. Fulham will be hoping that that true ability is still another 90 minutes away. But here is a forceful striker who will need close attention. As I hand over now to Hugh Johns, the thinking is that stamina, as much as anything else, is going to decide this game. And with the lights already on here at Craven Cottage, it is the dark shirts of Leeds. On your left, kicking off and starting this game. Leeds, of course, normally playing in the white shirts, having to change this afternoon because of the colour clash with Fulham. And now it is Leeds with Eddie Gray. Finding little Johnny Giles. Now Cooper looking for Jones. Dempsey getting it into touch. Hunter. Cooper. This is Pearson getting into trouble. Chance for Jones almost then. Pearson not getting that ball away quickly and very nearly setting one up for Leeds. Callahan. Good ball for Barrett. Fulham moving forward now. This is Les Barrett. Clark. Has Callahan moving outside him. Switching it. Earl going up. Earl getting his head to it, but in fact that ball is going to Gary Sprake, the Welsh international goalkeeper for Leeds United. Gets his first touch of the ball. And a goal kick for Leeds. Gary Sprake, the Welsh international, who was only 18 when he was first capped for Wales, the youngest goalkeeper in an international side. Callahan back there for Fulham. And a foul call against Lorimer. Number eight there, Lorimer. Brown now for Fulham. Oh, and that was a bad one. This is Giles. Only half hit that one. And given straight back to him again. What a mistake by the Fulham defence. Now Bremner. One here for Greenoff. Jimmy Greenoff. And a 
Fellas, Fulham players must be cursing themselves for not getting that ball away first time. Jimmy Greenock makes it 1-0 for Leeds, just three minutes of the game gone. Before the game, we were speaking to Les Cocker and Don Revy, who were saying that Leeds had surprised Sheffield Wednesday at Sheffield this season by coming out in a much more aggressive mood from the start. And here is evidence of that same pattern again. A very slickly taken goal, but again, defensive mistakes really the cause. So lead. Leeds get that lead. And Fulham now. Trying to get back in again through Johnny Haynes. This is Greenoff now. Gray. Gray can run straight down the middle if he keeps on going. And that wasn't a bad one. Tony Macedo. And there he is, number 11, Eddie Gray, the boy who ran nearly 40 yards before putting in that shot. And what a blinder it was, too. Well, there's nothing defensive at all about the way Leeds are setting off here at Craven Cottage really powering their way through. Number seven, the fair-haired figure of Jimmy Greenoff with this corner. And that was very nearly straight into the neck. It's off for another corner. As usual, the figure right up there on the far post, big Jack Charlton. Conway heading that away. Number two, Jimmy Conway. Filling in, of course, for the injured George Cohen in this unfamiliar right-back position for Fulham. Charlton now. Charlton getting himself in some difficulty there. Bremner coming back now. Giles, the midfield link band with Bremner in the leads. Well, what at the moment is anyway an orthodox 4-2-4 formation. Haynes, a long one for Clark to chase. Cooper. Cooper doing well to turn him almost on the line. And the foul called against Earl. Feeding Cooper as he tried to get his clearance out. Brown clearing. Now Gilroy for Fulham. Finding Barrett. Charlton there for Leeds. Greenoff. Greenoff turning beautifully. Giles now has Bremner working outside him and Hunter calling for it inside, but it's Bremner first. Giles again, and that'll be a throw. In. Haynes finding Clark. Charlton there to cover. Cooper. Brown, Haynes. Clark. Oh, and robbed by Hunter. A tremendous drive from this big man. Well taken out by Brown. Now Pearson. Aiming for... Oh, aiming for Earl and Cooper. Looked as though he very nearly got the boot in the face. Actually, it hit him in the chest. Throw in is to Fulham. Eddie Gray thought it was his ball. Earl Pearson. Clark. Charlton. Steady. Shows how quickly Leeds switch from all-out attack to all-out defence. There was no Leeds 
forward up to get that ball. Dempsey, but now it's Gray, finding Bremner. Jones on Mark Pearson, number six, gives a free kick to Fulham. Callahan. Lorimer. Lorimer still with it. And Macedo had to put that one over the bar. Tony Macedo, it's the second time he's had to leap high to shots from these lively leads forwards. That one, number eight, Peter Lorimer. Tall, burly figure of this Scottish under-23 international, number 11, Eddie Gray, going out to take this corner for Leeds. Charlton fighting for it. Haynes now as Fulham try and strike quickly back. Gilroy, but Hunter's coming across. And a foul call against Hunter. Fred Callahan playing an orthodox left back position despite the figure on his back. Conway coming forward for this one for Fulham. And Haynes just unable to hold it. Cooper, a good one for Jones. Jones has Lorimer inside him, but he's going through on his own. Oh, what a beautiful goal! What a beautiful goal! run by Mick Jones. That's only his third league goal of the season for Leeds, but that showed the class of a hundred thousand pounds man. Hundred thousand pounds indeed. A perfect individual goal that, but again the lamentable work in that Fulham defence. That started really deep in the uh, in Leeds' own half there with that slick work quickly by Leeds, but. Jones is a man that must take full credit for a perfect individual goal, but what trouble Fulham are in at the moment. So Leeds, who started this game in third place in the first division, really looking like a team fully deserving that, that high position. 2 nothing up. And Fulham now with a tremendous amount to do. This is Barrett. Long leg of Jack Charlton preventing the, the young Fulham player getting through. Callahan with a 
the throw in. Clark. Now Barrett. And Clark now, and that hit Sheldon. Well, that one was going in the net from Alan Clark, number nine, until it hit big Jack Charlton, and it did hit him. He didn't really know what was happening for a moment. But that certainly prevented Fulham getting at least one goal back. Corner kick, Les Barrett. The linesman placing the ball just inside the semicircle. Giles getting it out. Now Pearson. Easily taken out by Eddie Gray in a chase now with Jimmy Conway. Throw in to Fulham. Number two there, Jimmy Conway. Brown. Looking for Clark. Now Gilroy. Well taken out by Cooper. Johnny Giles taking it over. Lorimer there. Clark going for this one. Ooh, and this is letting in Jones again. Now Bremner. Giles moving forward, he's got Rini coming outside him on the right. And a strong tackle, well taken out by Pearson. Now Callahan, good ball for Gilroy, and Charlton coming across, it's still Gilroy. Rini in front of Gilroy. It was a good break by Fulham. Johnny Haynes turning and trying the lob shot for the top left-hand corner. Couldn't really control it properly. So there's still nothing in Gary Sprague's net as he takes another goal kick for Leeds. Jones up for this. Dempsey fell in, slipped in the mud. Green off. And the referee says that Macedo must have got a touch to that one. So it's a corner. Peter Lorimer, number eight, taking it. Jones. And offside. Call against Jack Charlton. The free kick quickly taken. Now it's Barrett for Fulham. Conway, Pearson, oh, and trying to find Haynes and hitting it too soon, it looked very much offside against, yes, Peter Lorimer, well offside. So, number four, the centre-back, as it were, of Fulham taking this. Giles. Lorimer. <laughs> Lorimer. <laughs> was a fair shoulder charge by Lorimer, of course, with his shoulder, but... Uh, as Callahan got it in the chest, that made it an unfair shoulder charge. So Callahan gets a free kick instead. Now Pearson under this one for Fulham. Gilroy, and that'll be taken away from him by Greenough. 
Giles. Now Hunter. Greenough. Gray and free kick. A nudge by Conway. Number 10, a diminutive little era international, Johnny Giles, with his free kick. Gray. Giles again. Cooper, and it's Gilroy cutting away quickly for Fulham. As Clark outside him. Four leads men back as two, three, four. Fulham men attack, and it's been slowed right down, so leads are really pouring back into defence now. Numerical advantage has been lost. So Rini comes away for leads. for Leeds. Hunter running into a good position. No, it's a great chance for Greenup. What a beautiful ball. Beautiful ball from Hunter through for Greenup. It's 3-0 now. 27 minutes of the first half gone. And this is something new and extremely welcome from Leeds. Noted as one of the most formidable defensive teams when they're away from home. Here they are opening up to tremendous effectiveness. A first-class opportunity there created by slick teamwork and really hammered home. Congratulations, Leeds. This is something we've wanted to see from you from a long, for a long, long time. And the foul call for Pearson and Gilroy getting a little sandwich in on Billy Bremner. Leeds really switching from attack to defence with almost lightning speed here at Creighton Cottage. Lorimer was under that, but now Greenough. Now Giles. Giles still there. And the corner kick off Callahan. Number five going back there. And number 11 for Leeds coming across, Eddie Gray. Fine, big lad, 5 foot 11, powerful, powerful player. Charlton! Jack Charlton up there with his head. Fulham trying to get something going again through Haynes. Conway. Now Barrett, Charlton, almost set that up for Earl. Steve Earl now for Fulham. With a 3-0 lead. I'm sure that Gary Sprake must be feeling very, very cheerful and certainly looks it at the moment. And a foul call against Lorimer, nudging Brown. Stan Brown with the ball now. Coming over to take the free kick himself. Charlton winning it to Giles. Now Barrett. Gilroy. Haynes there. So is Gray, and the throw in is to Fulham. Conway now. Jimmy Conway. Jimmy Conway.
Conway has scored two goals for Fulham this season. Hopefully looking for a third, but not with that sort of direction. too harsh on Johnny Haynes then that ball did get a hop off somebody with a boat a little under a minute of the first half left Fulham get a chance to possibly pull a goal back here as Earl takes this corner they haven't had clear cut chances Hugh but they've had them and this just goes to show the difference between the two sides at the moment Giles hacking that one away Gray is there I watch the first half is in fact over the referee having a quick look at his Cooper for Leeds now Hunter throw into Fulham referee has accepted a, a 45 minute signal from each of his linesmen Greenough, and there is the whistle for half time as the dark shirts of Leeds stream away off the field in that top right hand corner, perfectly satisfied with a 3 0 lead. Jimmy Greenough having got two of them, and Mick Jones having got the other one. We wonder if there are any more goals left in this game. We'll be seeing in a few moments when we have the second half. Join us then. <laughs> So the players come out here for the second half, the dark shirts of Leeds feeling very satisfied with a 3-0 lead, but I imagine Fulham or not. Perhaps with a couple of reasons for Fulham's unhappiness, here's Peter Lorenzo. Fulham are being outclassed by this fine lead side, which is showing itself to be as skillful as it is hardworking. Don Revy's men are so much sharper, they're moving and thinking quicker, with the inevitable result that they're creating extra room in which to work. Norman Hunter and Paul Reaney, normally such tight defenders, are frequently breaking free to add weight to an already considerable attack. This looks a pretty hopeless situation for Fulham. They don't seem to have the men or the appetite for this particular game. So, Fulham kick off this second half, and uh, immediately we notice that Fulham have a substitute out there. John Dempsey has not come out for the second half. I must admit I saw no injury in the first half, but John Ryan is back there at number 12, filling in for John Dempsey. Now it's the dark shirts of Leeds coming forward again. And the ball disappearing into the crowd. Finally, number 11, Eddie Gray gets hold of it. This is Giles, now Gray again. Oh, and so easily taken away from him by Gray. Looking for Lorimer. Gray cutting through a tremendous speed here. Gray still there. And that's a corner. Well, this big man, Eddie Gray, a big lad, he's not a man yet, still a youngster, really has got a tremendous turn of speed when he wants to turn it on. Jimmy Greenoff now with a corner for Leeds. And Clark coming away for Fulham. But not very far, it's Cooper. 
Kuba has Green off outside on the left. Green off pulling it back. And a great goal from Mick Jones. What a beautiful goal. Give the credit there to Jimmy Greenoff, though, going right down to the line to drag that one back. And Mick Jones climbing up almost completely unmarked to head goal number four. A beautiful goal indeed if you're a lead supporter, Hugh, but if you're a Fulham man, I would be almost crying with the lamentable work there. Mick Jones completely unmarked, and he'd already shown his worth, and still nobody there to cover him. This is Fulham at their worst, and unfortunately, they cannot afford to be at their grimmest with such a perilous league position face facing them. So Leeds doing almost what they like. Here's Clark. It's Clark for Fulham going on on a half chance. Jones, Mick Jones, Billy Bremner. Greenoff calling for it out on the right. And now Giles inside, if he can get it. Passes have got to be a bit accurate in that area of the field, which is very, very muddy. Greenoff chasing this one, has Giles inside him. Giles ready to pass back again, Greenoff again. Greenoff. <laughs> a dramatic dive but no penalty there's Barrett for Fulham and now Steve Earle Barrett did well trying to chip it over Sprague Lorimer, Giles calling for it on the right, that's where it goes, Bremner coming up, Bremner here and now Gray, Jones here for Gray, and now Jones, well that was a hat-trick chance for Mick Jones, and nearly goal number five for Leeds. And that was Hunter and Gray conspiring together to nudge Alan Clark, a free kick to Fulham. Center of the field there, very, very muddy and heavily sanded, as you can see. Earl now. Cooper shadowing Earl. Hunter. Jones to Greenough. And lurking deep out on the right, Johnny Giles with nobody marking him. Bremner coming through again. And outside here is Gray. Leads in a very positive position here now. This is Lorimer. And that was an easy one for Greenough. A hat-trick for Jimmy Greenoff. Goal number five for Leeds, and the ease with which Leeds set that goal up. Really, it's just too easy for them. Well, Greenoff mishit that ball, although the intention was to get it in the back of the net. He certainly didn't mean it to go the way it did go. Nevertheless, another classic illustration of the ineptness of the Fulham defence. Leeds virtually built that move up at walking pace. Still, even at walking pace, Fulham had nothing to counter it with. A, a goal that tells its own sad, sad story. So Fulham now very, very far out of this game and being more firmly lodged at the foot of the first division with every passing minute of this game. Now it's Barrett.
Now it's Giles. Lee's really just finding so much space to work in. It just isn't true. This is Hunter now. Now it's Gray. Gray drawing Earl back. And a foul then by Earl on Gray. Steve Earl drawn deep to help his defence. The only way he could stop the powerful running of Eddie Gray then was to put a foul tackle in. Number 10 there, Johnny Giles. Number 4, Bremner. And that was Gray just wide of getting a sixth goal for Leeds. the highest number of goals Leeds have scored in a league match since they beat Chelsea 7-0 and a nudge in the back then by Gilroy on Bremner and referee Pritchard taking his book out to Gilroy well I can only think that he must have had a word to him earlier in the game because that really was a very 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 minor infringement Perhaps he didn't take his name, perhaps he just showed him the book, but it certainly looked like a, a booking. Cooper now for Bremner. Giles, Greenough, Reaney. Greenough now. Now Reaney has Giles behind him. Good ball for Hunter. Now Gray. Hunter. All these Leeds players eager for it. It's Lorimer. And handball called against Lorimer. And Lorimer saying that he brought it down with his chest, but the referee saying he brought it down with his arm. Conway. Brown in the mud there. Robbed by Greenoff. Greenoff and now Jones. Now Pearson has Haynes going down the middle. And Chop picking it out with ease. And Chop setting off on a run that might produce something. Yes! Well, how about that for, a, for the footballer of the year? Big Jack Charlton. Alan Clark. Now Pearson, Clark. And he hit the post. Pearson missing that one, let's Lorimer in. Brown in front of him. Lorimer. Well, that should have been number six. chair from the Fulham supporters as Fulham finally break down that tantalizing Leeds attack. Callahan now. But it's also pedestrian for Fulham. Passes going astray so consistently. have the feeling that even Leeds want this to end quickly now. Well, there's very little of it left now. Well into the last minute of this game on my watch, as Greenoff comes forward again. It's Bremner. Greenoff. Now Giles, now Gray. 
There seem to be about 13 or 14 blue shirts out there. And Fulham just can't keep tabs on these Leeds players. Greenoff. And there it is. There is the final whistle. The agony has ended for Fulham. The score, a devastating one. Leeds five, the hat trick from Jimmy Greenoff. Mick Jones showing his £100,000 form, getting the other two. As I say good afternoon to you from Fulham, here's Pete Lorenzo looking back on the whole game. From the fourth minute when Jimmy Greenoff banged in the first of his hat trick, Fulham was struggling against this powerful all-round lead side that now looms up so menacingly as championship challengers. This was a side without a weakness today, and for me, without a star. They had 11 of them. And I wonder if we will see a slicker individual goal than this one scored by England leader Mick Jones. There was loose covering by Fulham to start with, and it was quickly exploited by this quick-thinking, quick-moving lead side, with Jones showing the confidence and the skill to go it alone so impressively for the final flourish. Yes, Fulham were really routed, and one wonders whether they can escape the second division this time. From us all here at Caven Cottage, a miserable cottage at the moment, it's goodbye until next Sunday's Star Soccer.